Welcome to the Heidi Thorne Show. I'm your host, Heidi Thorne, and in this podcast, I share my real-world self-publishing and small business experience with you. So let's get started with today's show. Now, today we're going to talk about a trend that I've seen uh, in the self-publishing arena that a lot of people are trying to jump on, and it's called low-content books. No, in theory, doesn't that sound wonderful? <laughs> you don't have to write a whole lot, and yet you can sell a book. <laughs> yeah, that sounds really cool. Uh, let's talk about what a low-content book is. Basically, a low-content book is one that doesn't have a lot of writing and text in it. Now, that doesn't mean that it is no content. And it doesn't mean that it is, it is no value. Usually when we're talking about low content books, we're talking about workbooks, journals, maybe coloring books, <laughs> they, uh, maybe even card decks. Um, there's just, uh, there's text, but just not a lot of it. And usually the uh, content is meant to spur some activity or thought process for the reader. Now, I've talked about self-publishing your workbooks and journals in another video, um, and that's a little bit more about the uh, production side of it. Uh, but we're going to really talk about more of the content side of that today. Now, I have done two low content books and one of them has been pretty popular and that is or at least in terms of popular in terms of the number of the books that I have and it's been this book 101 writing prompts and what it is it's more of a journal write-in journal type thing and I give them a writing prompt and then there's space for them to write their answer in the spaces in the book. So it is a larger format book. Most of my books are about five and a half by eight and a half, but this one is about eight and a half by 11. So it does um, offer more writing space. And the other reason that I did it on a large format is because uh, one, I wanted to self publish with uh, KDP or Kindle Direct Publishing and they don't offer spiral bound in fact very few do <laughs> uh, and i didn't want to do hardcover because that's just astronomically expensive and so this allows them to keep the book flatter when they're writing in it so that's why i chose a little bit larger format because there was going to be a lot of writing in the book and of course you have to think about you know, these were questions for people to answer to get them thinking about some other um, ideas for their blog or their website. And so um, it's a more of a journal write-in book. I, my other book is uh, Looking Questions, 31 Questions That Can Change Your Business and Your Life. And it's also a write-in book, but um, it's just a few few sentences here and there. So, And I thought this was more appropriate for this type of thought journal. Um, it, it's smaller because I thought people would be more likely to uh, keep it in maybe their briefcase or, or bag and want to whip it out and do some writing in the book. So that's why I made that smaller. This one was a lot more thought involved so um, and a lot more writing. So I gave them a bigger format on that. So you really have to look at what you're offering and what you want your people to or your readers to do as a result of using your book. Now, I have had a client who actually, she was writing a regular book uh, for her business and it was all part of her service package. And then as we were going through the edits and whatnot, she figured out, or we figured out together, that her book was better as a workbook because she wanted to pe people to be doing a lot of things. And it was kind of the onboard, on-ramp 
for her business. So that was a lower content book. You know, she did have a, a good, pretty good fair amount of, of writing, but not so much that it would be like a few hundred page book. You know, and she actually wanted to engage her readers. And I think that's one of the important things is, do you want to engage your readers other than just listening or reading, I guess, or listening by reading? <laughs> and I guess that brings up another point. Uh, these don't work for audiobooks. <laughs> I suppose I've been trying to think if there's a way to do that, but there really, really isn't. But an interesting aside to this is that for this writing prompt book, I sell a fair amount of the Kindle ebook version, which I think is really interesting because they don't really need the physical book, but they do want to get the writing prompts and then they'll probably just use it on their computer or um, their iPad or whatever tablet they're using, or they might be just writing it on a pad of paper. Who knows? But I, I thought that was an interesting uh, result from the market. So the low content book it, for a while there coloring books were like such a hot thing that's kind of cooled off a little bit and you know and you don't want to just throw something together you know again i've only done this twice um with these low content books and you really have to be thoughtful about it don't don't just throw something together and just say it's a low content book i mean really put some thought and effort into it. But I think they're an interesting and um, offer that you can have for your readers that gives them just a little bit something different. You could also use it to be a supplement to your other books that might be longer. So, you know, there's a lot of ways to use this, but um, the other thing that I've seen people do is uh, card decks. I have had an author who did a card deck. That's it. That's really hard to do. Um, and I'm going to say it because it's, it's such a printing uh, production job. And not many people will do that. There's uh, some online folks that will do a card deck, online printers that will do some card decks, but it's a super specialty type of uh, printing and you'd have to invest a lot up front and then you have to go through fulfillment. And so I, I'm not, I love card decks. I think they're, I think they're a great content and they're a low content type of offering, but um, they are a very high investment on your part. So um, if you want to kind of experiment with it, I would definitely experiment with um, a Kindle Direct Publishing uh, just so that you can you know, do it for very low cost and see how the market responds. So I hope you have found that helpful or inspiring. And if you did, I would appreciate it if you would wander over to Apple Podcasts and give the Heidi Thorne Show a nice rating and review. And uh, if you're not in uh, the Apple universe, um, you can go over to Stitcher or Podbean and um, subscribe to the Heidi Thorne Show so that you don't miss an episode. So again, I'm on Apple, Stitcher, Podbean. I'm also on your Alexa. Uh, you just have to use the AnyPod skill. And if you like the video version better, that's fine too. You just have to subscribe to my Heidi Thorne YouTube channel and you'll get all the new videos there. I would really appreciate it if you would share The Heidi Thorne Show with your friends, your author friends, but particularly on social media. And if you want to see my self-published books, including my 101 business writing prompts or looking questions, uh, they are available on uh, Amazon, of course. You just have to search for my name, Heidi Thorne, and you'll find my author page and all the official editions of my books are there for purchase 
purchase. And uh, if you like the audiobooks, um, of course, I'm on Audible and iTunes. And if um, you want to connect with me, my website is very simply HeidiThorne.com. Thank you so much for listening and for your support. I'll look forward to talking with you again in the next episode. And in the meantime, have a great day.